I will um, I'll start, I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the October 27th meeting of the Westwood Planning Board. My name is David Atkins and I'll be chairing the meeting tonight. I'm gonna to call this meeting to order with a roll call vote of the board members and to confirm that everybody has access to the meeting materials. And if there are any technical difficulties that need to be resolved, just wanna make sure everybody's able to get in. So I'll do a roll call now, Mr. Paff. Here. Mr. DeLay, don't see him yet. Um, Ms. Conant, not here. Um, and Mr. Gotti. Here. All right, and let's see. So I'll continue to read the uh, our opening thing here. We'll see if uh, if Mr. DeLay joins us. And as I mentioned earlier, I think we, we had heard that Ms. Conant is not gonna be able to join us tonight. So all meetings of the planning board are recorded by Westwood Media Center and broadcast live on local cable television, Comcast Channel 12 and Verizon Channel 42. The meetings are also available afterwards on the uh, YouTube channel from Westwood Media Center and or live streamed as they are tonight. If this was an in-person meeting, I would ask people to who wanted to record the meeting to identify themselves, but it's remote and you can record away if you wish. Um, please silence your cell phone ringers and mute yourself when you're not speaking uh, so that we minimize background noise. So the process of our planning board meetings, we typically have applications that are submitted to the board and we conduct public hearings if there's a public comment part required. Um, we have other applications that are not a formal public hearing, but we have a discussion about it and there may be public comment at the board's discretion. And we have parts of the meeting that are work sessions where the board members discuss issues and deal with administrative items such as approval of the meeting minutes, future agendas, and hearing updates from department staff and other boards. Prior to each item, the chair will announce the item and hopefully provide some accurate descriptive context. Um, then we typically invite the applicant to address the board. They'll give us a short presentation summarizing what's been requested. Board members have the materials ahead of time, have received the application materials um, to read, reviewed them. The board members may ask questions of during and following that presentation. And then our professional staff, the town planner, outside experts would present research assessments, uh, commentary to the board. And if the issue has a public hearing, we proceed to a public comment portion of the hearing where we'll recognize individuals to uh, make comments from the public. In this remote meeting format, uh, residents and guests can participate in several ways. We recognize them to speak over the Zoom meeting application or from a telephone dial-up, and uh, we'll try to remember to remind people about those options throughout the meeting and keep an eye on the Zoom uh, participants to see if uh, people are joining or not. And um, additionally, people can always submit comments by email ahead of time or regular mail prior to the meeting and those comments are distributed to the board members so they read them before the meeting. Um, all of our remote meetings require that there be a roll call vote. So we'll go through a roll call on every vote. Um, once a motion and second has been made, the chair will ask if there's any further discussion and proceed to the roll call vote. Um, and I think that uh, that is our, our basic process. So we'll move on, I'm gonna see if, uh, was Bill, has Bill joined the meeting or? Okay, so the three of us are here. Um, we will move on to the agenda. Have there, there are no changes to the agenda, I assume? Right, no changes. Okay, so the first item on the agenda, it has to do with 45 Clapper Tree Street, homes at 45. This was the open space residential special permit and, um, I believe that uh, we have a request tonight to um, really have the uh, green companies here to talk about uh, the next step here and releasing them from a covenant and uh, the plan for how things develop from there. So I'll just turn it, I'll recognize uh, Mr. Green, right, to, uh, to present. Thank you. Abby, did you want to introduce anything or do you want me to? Um, I can summarize if, if you'd like um, for the board members. The, the process is 
Um, so this was the special permit that the planning board approved in 2019. And um, prior to construction, the planning board um, ensured the work through a um, covenant agreement. So that was um, a performance guarantee that was a requirement of the planning board um, to have the, um, the property and the homes um, be held in a covenant agreement. Um, so that really ensures that the work gets completed if something were to happen. Um, and then um, the green company now is they've moved along further into construction. They're getting ready to close on the first um, units in, in the next few weeks. And so prior to selling those units, um, he's requesting a release from the covenant. And then instead of a, a covenant, the guarantee would become a tri-party agreement. So that's essentially a, a bond between um, the planning board, the green company and the bank um, within the amount of the remaining work. So we had Phil Paradis of Bader Engineering go out and do, did a um, site inspection and provided a cost estimate for the remaining work that you had in your packet, which was um, 77,000. So um, town council and I have um, worked with um, Mr. Green and his attorney about coming up with a tri-party agreement that you had in your packet. Um, so that's um, the agreement that's in front of you tonight. Um, so you should be, your motion and the request tonight is to release um, the, the lots, the, the houses, I mean, it's um, the 40 units from the covenant and then accept the tri-party agreement in the total amount of the 77,000. That was a good summary. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Abby. Can I add to that? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're doing this in phases. And so each phase we have to have certain infrastructure in place. Um, we've gone beyond that in most cases, but certain things like top coating the road and top coating the sidewalks will not be done before the first closing because we really want to wait until the end so the construction traffic doesn't destroy what we're creating. And so there'll always be a bond amount or tri-party agreement amount outstanding. Uh, it's gonna start at $77,000. I think by your next meeting, we'll be down to only $35,000 outstanding. And we may come back to release that, probably not since you're not gonna be collecting on it. I think we'll just wait till the next phase. And then this will build over time because in the second phase, there'll be more roadway and more sidewalk that gets added. But as it stands right now, there are, um, there are six houses that are mostly done and two models in addition to that, or not models, but two homes we're not selling yet because we're walking people through them. And uh, the roadway is complete. All utilities are installed, water, sewer, the drainage is active. And most of the landscaping on the perimeter um, is in for phase one. There are two more homes to go. And we've been keeping um, Ms. McCabe well informed and up to speed as to where we're at. And the relationship I think has been working really well. And we're here to convert to the tri-party agreement so that we can sell our first home, which is now scheduled to close on the first week of December. And then we'll be going, there'll be a, we'll be going every two weeks for the first um, four homes, and then there'll be a small gap. And then we're starting up again in, in the winter, uh, February-ish will be closing the home every two weeks. Well, thank you. I had a couple of uh, quick questions. I, I think um, the, uh, the soccer field, it looks like it's, it's pretty much ready. Is that, uh, but I, what's kind of the status of the soccer field? Just curious. Sure. So we've worked very closely with Todd Korchin uh, and um, of DPW, and we've given the town irrigation to the field um, off of town water. So we supplied the tap for that. And we've also given him power off of our meeting house to run his equipment so he doesn't have to have his own electric service. And we're ready to turn the playing field over to the town. But um, I don't think you guys want it right away. You keep canceling town meeting on me. And so it's as soon as that comes up in May, we're ready to do that. We have a series of uh, restrictions and public access to get to the field. So there's a walking trail that goes basically from the temple parking lot to and from the soccer field 
all of that language has been approved by town council. The restrictions on the playing field have been approved by town council. So we're ready to go once town meeting is held. And it, oh, um, we're gonna go into a lease with the town for the spring season. So you will be able to use it for springtime because town, town meeting won't happen until May. Uh, do any any questions from other board members? Chris, you look like you're saying something, but you're muted. Okay, anyway, Chris. Yeah, I think your audio is not working. Uh, Actually, you know, you could use the Q&A if there's something you want to. Chris, the other option you could do is just, it looks like you're in a car, maybe just dial in from the phone so that we can hear you at least. Oh, wait, can you unmute him? I tried. He's not muted. He's not muted now, but we can't hear him. It seems to be an issue with his actual phone that he's using, not a Zoom issue. Oh, okay. If he leaves and rejoins the webinar, I can promote it back to a panelist and that might solve it. Okay. I didn't have any questions, Dave. Chris, are you able to hear us? Like, could you do a thumbs up if you can hear? You can hear us, but we can't hear you. If you want to you could type something in the Q and A if you wanted to uh, acknowledge. If you if you don't have any questions, you could just say I don't have any questions in the Q and A. Or you can't type. I think he's driving. Oh, oh okay. He's, he's not driving, but at least he he's not drive. driving. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a. I saw somebody got in trouble for that, um, or there was a question about that somewhere. Not the, you know, because they were. Anyway, let's not go there. <laughs> so, so I'm going to assume then no questions because I don't. You look like you're happy with this. Um, we'll see if he rejoins. Um, so, no questions from Rob. Did anybody? Was there any other staff commentary or any any other questions? Well, I can add a couple more things while we're waiting, if that's helpful. Which are um, we're going to top coat the parking lot for the playing field. Um, this fall, actually in probably about, I think it's mid-November, November 15 is the date. And uh, we're not gonna stripe it or put in the parking stops until the springtime, because we don't wanna encourage use through the winter. But that part will be done so that in the springtime, we, we wanted to wait till the fall so that the asphalt will cure more solidly and not have any people going on and turning their wheels and gouging it in the summertime or in the when it was warmer so it will be ready for use and we've already set up the area for the handicap or accessible sorry accessible porta potties and uh the fencing that goes in with that and the um the clubhouse that's already built too like i was i kind of had forgotten i went over there looked at it today and um I was expecting like a gazebo or something. I forgot that actually there's a really nice, I thought, what is the clubhouse? Looks like a house. Like it's yeah. actually a really nice uh, building. Well, there. When you decide, when you required us to create it, we thought, why not make it a real asset for the community? And so now, especially because the homes are two bedrooms, this is an area where people can rent out if they're having a bigger gathering and not have to have all the guests in their home. So once we're post COVID, uh, generally we rent it out to the residents for the cost of cleaning, which will probably be around $100, $150. And Chris, it's a nice space. Mr. Can Cap. you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Ah, uh, I don't know what happened. Sorry about that. I was going to ask about the clubhouse. That's what I just wanted to find a status. So I just heard. So thank you. You're welcome. And then the bike, uh, the bike rack's going in in front of that very shortly. And I think we were just finishing up the uh, the access ramp. So people can get to it in a wheelchair otherwise it's ready for its certificate of occupancy as well do you happen to know the uh like what the bike racks look like i know we've approved something and all but just always like to check on that yes um it looks exactly like what uh the town installed recently in 
and I think there were like eight or 10 of them that were just installed. So we found out exactly what that brand is. I don't know it off the top of my head, but it's a local company and we've ordered two, one for the meeting house and one for the playing field. You mean like the ones at the high school and kind of the, where it's a, like a um, rectangular accordion sort of thing or, or just the U, inverted U? I don't happen to know the exact type. Um, Ms. McCabe, you may know. I just, I can't remember what it was because I was talking with Todd Korchin about it and we just asked him, he thought he might even have some available, but we just copied what he, the, he had eight of them, he said, and it's whatever he last installed. I have not seen the picture myself. I don't remember. I think most recently we usually do the inverted U. I, I think that's what it is, but I don't want to promise because I don't know, but it was whatever um todd said that they had installed okay yeah we just i always like to um check on the we don't like the old dish rack style ones that are um you know we like the inverted U's, and there's like there we have a document that describes what's been approved i, I know we complied with the document all right um any other anybody have any other questions or maybe uh would someone like to make a motion I'll make a motion to release the OSRD project, formerly known as 45 Clap Retreat, um, containing the homes at 45 uh, from the covenant and to accept the provided tripartite agreement in the amount of $77,000. I'll second that. Okay, there's a motion for Mr. Gotti and a second for Mr. Paff. Um, any further discussion? Dave, I have a question. Sure. Um, is Mr. Delay on the call yet or no? No, he's not here. Okay. Abby, have you received any other message or anything? Just want to check, make sure there's not in the waiting room or anything. Nope. Um, no. All right. Um, so there's a motion and a second. We'll have a roll call vote. In favor, um, Mr. Path. Aye. And um, Mr. Delay, not here. Ms. Conant, not present. Mr. Gotti. Aye. And I vote yes as well. So that motion passes. Three votes in favor. Um, and and Abby needs us to come in and, and sign paperwork, right? right? Right. So um, if if you could um, come to Carpe Street at some point, um, Suzanne Hogan in the building department is a notary public. So um, she needs to be there. She's not in on Wednesdays. So if any of you are able to come in on Thursday or Friday before one or Monday or, or Tuesday between 830 and 430. Um, Do you need you know, to be there, Abby? What? Do you need to be there? I don't need to be there, but if you will Suzanne me, have the paperwork um I will leave it at the office I mean I, I'll probably be there but if you could text me or email me before you come just so I can okay. we can be ready for you and we'll meet you up front and I'll get Suzanne will get her stamp and if you could also bring your ID okay is it just the three of us who need to sign or all five I, I think just three since you are here right so it's just the three of you will be signing this. Okay. Thank you very much. And I'll bring in two notarized originals for you as well uh, once we receive them from the bank so we can complete the document. And I wanted to thank everybody. It's, um, it's been an interesting process. Uh, everyone's been very thorough, but also very cooperative. And I hope you found us to be the same. Uh, we're trying very hard to do it the right way and live up to everything that we've said we would do. Congratulations and good luck with the closings. Thank you so much. Look forward to bringing some new residents and some new tax revenue to the town. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I'm going to leave now. Though. Take care. Bye. All right. Good night. Well, the second item, the second item on our agenda is a public hearing. This is a continued public hearing on the open space and recreation plan. This is um, planning board submitted a final and revised and approved plan to the Massachusetts Division of 
Conservation Services after our July 21st meeting and continued this hearing expecting to get some responses from them. And I think we have now received a couple of comments. Um, so I'll just, Abby, do you wanna summarize that and um, anything else you need to add? Yeah, so this, um, we had been waiting um, for the final review um, with the state. We did get just the last two comments left. Um, she recommended um, in one place in section six where we outlined we summarized the goals and she recommended just keeping all the goals and objectives together in section eight. So in the document, um, the updated red line version and a clean version that you had in your packet, I relocated those goals all to section eight. And then she had asked a question about um, one of the columns in table 14, which was um, the summary of the um, recreation properties. Um, she had asked what uh, one of the statements, um, what as developed meant. Um, so I added in there um, explaining that it was, um, you know, it's the fields and the playground uses to specify each one um, that they are you know, currently developed in the, um, the playing fields that we were looking for as desired. So we are, um, so I'm asking you tonight to review this final version to once again go back to the state and she said once she has um, this updated version she can hopefully turn around a, a final clean approval letter very soon and that would close out your um, process okay so tonight we are accepting this the two small things that you just mentioned and sending it back again yeah. And it is a public hearing, so we would be opening it up if there's anybody attending who wants to comment on it. Uh, first, I'll just ask if you know, any any comments from board members or questions. None for me. Nor me. Okay. Um, is there so we we'll have we have this is a public hearing. Is there anyone um, who is attending the meeting? If you. Um, could indicate if you is there a raise your hand or if add a comment in the Q and A section or if you're on a phone you can press star nine star nine, nine. So I'm just looking to see if anyone there's two earlier when you guys couldn't hear me I tried to type in the Q and A and it wouldn't let me type. Maybe because I'm a panelist, I don't know. Uh, I thought that was interesting, but I just, I backed out and then I came back in. That's how you got to hear me again. It says no open questions, only hosts and panelists can see the questions. Yeah, I'm not able to uh, do anything either. Correct. Yeah, I don't, I don't think as a panelist you can, it's, it's for, Yes, I believe that's by design. It's only the attendees that will be able to put questions into the Q&A. Yeah, but someone had mentioned that as a as a possibility to communicate with you guys. I tried it and it just wouldn't work. Okay. And I just see that someone uh, said they didn't have any questions. So that's working. So if they we just want to make sure that it's, you know, it's working if someone wanted to ask something. So I see no public comment today on the open space and recreation plan. Um, I don't have anything to add to this. So I think, um, let's see, do we, we would need to continue the public hearing until it's final, final, final. Um, and so I guess, would anyone like to make a motion? We need, first, I guess we need to resubmit it and then we'll also have a second motion to continue the public hearing. I, I, we need a motion to resubmit this back to the state. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think um, so. We need we two two votes. Two votes. A motion to vote to resubmit this as revised OSRP. Um, okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we resubmit the OSRP as presented with the changes mentioned uh, by Abby earlier this evening uh, to the state. I'll second that. All right, there's a motion and a second. Um, is there any any further discussion? 
uh, then we'll have a roll call vote on that. Um, Mr. Paff? Aye. And uh, Mr. Gotti? Aye. And um, there's no one else, no other board members attending, so I, and I vote yes as well. So there are three um, in favor to resubmit this. So that passes. And then I believe we would like to schedule the next, assuming that it will come back to us again and then continue a public hearing to perhaps Tuesday, November 17th, if someone wants to make that motion. I'll make the Is that the right date, Abby? Yes. Sorry. Tuesday, okay. November 17th, 7 p.m. Um, Zoom. Sorry, Rob, didn't mean to interrupt there. That's okay. Um, just want to make sure we have enough better, time. Better to be right. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'll make the motion to continue the public hearing to our next meeting on Tuesday, November 17th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. I'll second that. All right. There's a motion and a second. I don't think there's any further discussion. That That's not our next meeting. Is it, Abby, or is, is there a meeting in between then? Um, nope. That's your next meeting. So that's three weeks away. Okay, three weeks away, uh, and it'll be on Zoom like this. So, um, no further. Dis I don't see any further discussion or anybody wanting to discuss this. So, um, we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Paff? Aye. And Mr. Gotti? Aye. And I vote yes as well. So, the public hearing is continued until November 17th. Three votes in favor. Okay, so that's that's the end of that agenda item. Um, I think the rest of what we had were updates and things. Um, Abby, were you going to update us on uh, the other items here that are? Yes. Yep. Um, so we have um, since your last meeting, I reached out to several um, residents in town. Um, trying to compile the um, medical use zoning working group. So Chris and, um, you know, we left the September meeting with um, Chris and Path, um, Chris and Rob, sorry, sorry, Chris and Rob. And then I reached out to several others and we have um, seven residents total now. And we're going to be having our first, our first meeting on Monday. So we'll be meeting through Zoom. Um, to kind of have our first meeting. It, it took me a little while to reach out to people, see who was interested, but we got a group of residents together. We have um, residents from each area in town. So, you know, our, our resident representing the East Street neighborhood, someone representing near the um, the ARO, which is um, on Grove, uh, they live on Grove Street near Fox Hill Village area, um, a resident that lives in um, University Station, um, we have a real estate representative. Um, I did find someone from public, sa uh, public safety. Um, and then I, I was still looking for someone for um, health, uh, let's say in the healthcare. I, field. I, I gave you, I, I actually sent somebody who was willing to do it. I, I think I had um, forwarded you her email address. I'll do that again after this okay. meeting. Okay, great, great. And so we'll have our first meeting um, on Monday, and then so hopefully we'll have um, you know a couple meetings, few meetings before the end of the year, so that we'll be ready to present um, something to the planning board in time for the um, spring town meeting. Abby, did you uh, get any success with that individual I, we talked about earlier last week? No, no response. No response. All right. Would you like me to reach out? Sure, sure, yeah. Okay. Um, and then another update was, oh, the uh, comprehensive plan. Um, so the comprehensive plan steering committee, they uh, met recently. Um, they've been working, you know, their last in-person meeting or yeah, the last in-person meeting was in March, right before the outbreak. And at that time they had started working on, um, you know, compiling, all their sections together and doing final editing, um, which they've been working on and, and with you, um, the planning board members as liaisons to a couple sections over the last several months, saw you know, certain sections, drafts as, as those were finished. Um, they met on October 15th as a full committee. Um, they made a 
a few more um, edits and recommended changes, and then they voted to forward that on to you and the select board. Um, so your the um, planning board is the authority that needs to approve that plan. Um, so we um, the committee and um, the chair Jack Wig Jack Wigan uh, met with the select board last night to give a summary of the plan and, and review the work that they've been doing over the last two years um, and requested a letter of support from the select board. Um, so I can send you that video or if anyone wants to um, watch last night's select board meeting, that was the um, presentation from, from the committee. Um, and then they, the select board um, needed a little more time to prepare comments. So we'll expect comments from them at their next meeting in November. Uh, but we've scheduled a public hearing with you at your next meeting on Tuesday, November 17th. So you do, um, you have a draft, the, the draft I sent you in your packet and, um, you know, I'll, I'll resend it to you again. If you could begin um, reviewing that, look that over. I know over the last few months, um, well, I know Rob's new, so um, I'll follow up a little more with, with Rob, but Chris and, and Dave and Debbie and Bill had seen um, their, their sections, their respective sections that they've been working on over the last couple of months. But this is your chance to review the document as a whole. Um, so if you could start reviewing that, um, the committee and um, Jack Wigan will do a full presentation at your next meeting on um, November 17th. So that will be a full um, public hearing. Yeah, I read the the entire document. Um, made a lot of sense, and I thought Jack's and you, the presentation that you and Jack put together for the select board um, really did a nice job of summarizing that. So um, I, I had a couple of comments that I sent back, but other than that, um, I thought it was pretty tight. Oh, great, thank you. So yes, well, yep. If you have anything, uh, if you want to get me comments in advance of your hearing, we'll get those. So we'll get you you know a complete uh you know a completed document for november 17th but i expect on november 17th you'll open your hearing you'll discuss you'll take public comments you know i'll invite the full committee um in case you have questions for them and then essentially the committee is handing it off to you um for you to review so i expect you'll likely want to continue it probably to one of your december meetings the one question I had watching the select board meeting was you're at the very end of the summary, you had sort of a, a recommended prioritization of some of the bigger picture topics. Mm -hmm. um, does that sort of guidance on prioritization need to be worked into the document at all? That's the only other, the only thing I saw. Yes, the implementation matrix, I believe you're referring to. Is that well, it was a summary matrix? slide at the very end. I think there were like four things Oh yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, we'll take another look at that. When the committee met, they thought about, um, you know, everything is. When they talked about it, they thought, you know, all items are important, but when they had kind of pulled out a few of the items that they called the highest priority from what we've been hearing over the last couple of years and what we think is, you know, an immediate focus of the town, and and that came to be. So they added a column. Well, they had a matrix that had, you know, short term medium term, long term, and then highest priority. Um, so we'll make sure you get uh, that and we'll get another look at that. But I think those are really kind of like the big items that really stood out over the last two years. Okay. Abby, it, as I'm, I haven't seen the uh, select board meeting yet, um, these priority lists, it, it, is it clear when it's written that this document is not a move forward um, document in terms of uh, expenditures or anything like that. Um, I, I just, I'm, I want to be very clear. I think that we are not authorized to implement spending of any money or anything like that. Um, so I just want to make sure that the, when it's listed as a priority, it doesn't mean we're going to go do this. And that means we have to go spend X amount of dollars and to buy the land and then to build and so forth. So I, I don't, I don't recall the, does the 2000 document have an implementation priority matrix in it? Yes, it did, but you're right. I can take a look at that language. Um, Cause we talked about it a little bit, but yes, we could add something about this is not authorizing funds. It's like, it's a guide of where to focus 
efforts, but doesn't actually authorize expenditure. Okay. I, I just, I want to make sure that that point doesn't get lost because that could turn this document upside down um, from what its intended purpose is. And people may misunderstand that if it's indicating that we're going ahead and doing the things that are in there. So just want to make, make that point. All right, uh, thanks, Abby. Anything else? Um, oh, I guess just the last thing I forgot to say was, and we're also in the process of getting uh, letters of support from various um, committees. So we had outreach to them. We kind of just started that in, in the spring, um, but some, some of those committees are, um, those are coming in now. So you should have most of those in time for your November um, 17th meeting. All right, thanks, thanks, Abby. And then, um, in our there's a link you put in our materials to the uh, Citizen Planner Training Collaborative. Um, it's having a number of virtual workshops on uh, planning board issues, and uh, again, I recommend checking that out. Um, I've been to a couple of those in person; they're very interesting. And so, there's a link here for that. Um, I think the other couple of other things on the agenda. Um, I asked Abby to add a section for um, reports from um, commit subcommittees or committees and things like that. And I don't think I, I was. I just. I'm going to talk a little bit about TRIC, just what that is. But I was hoping that in our meetings we used to always have kind of an update if there had been meetings of things like um, the um, MBTA Advisory Board, um, the RTAC, the um, Regional Transportation Advisory. Council, the various boards and committees that we are, that some of us are, are on, uh, the Pedestrian Bike Safety Committee. I know they've had a couple of meetings, um, but so just if there was anything that anyone wanted, any board members wanted to report back from those uh, from those meetings, we should have a time on the agenda here to do that. So I guess, is there anything, uh, Chris or Rob, do you have anything you want to share from? No, Sarah is trying to, uh arrange a meeting for uh, housing um, and but she hasn't hasn't pulled that together yet so she was hoping to do it I think this month but I think it got pushed off um, so hopefully in the next four to six weeks we're able to get together and, and talk yeah and unfortunately the last uh, pedestrian bike safety commission meeting um, was the victim of a swarm of zoom bombers and um, I, I, I felt awful for both Abby and Chris for some of the language that was scrolling across the screen, but um, we quickly opened and closed that meeting and moved it to a different date. Let's see. Uh, I was going to give a little bit of an update. Chris, you had mentioned housing, and the uh, so the trick is the Three Rivers Interlocal council and it is a, a part of the metropolitan area planning uh council uh and it but it represents our region which consists of um let's see I have a list of the towns here um it's uh canton dedham dover foxborough medfield milton needham norwood randolph sharon stoughton walpole and westwood so the, um, the Three Rivers Interlocal Council meets once a month. So it's basically every third Tuesday morning. Um, and it's, it's always interesting because there's a community sort of share round table. So I go, they go through each, each people from the towns, mostly it's planners and uh, planning staff. And then there's a couple of um, select board member from Needham, um, planning board member from Dedham, um, and then various other, um, staff but there's kind of they share kind of what's going on in their towns in terms of um, economic development and uh, planning related issues so it's always that part of it is very it's interesting to hear what's what's going on um, and uh, the biggest the biggest I pick one thing is that there's been a lot of interest this year in housing and there will be a special a meeting um, November 11th I believe if that's the Tuesday where they are inviting select board members and um, 
town administrators to a meeting to talk about the creation of a regional housing services organization. And that would be a, a regional organization that um, would serve some of the housing needs for um, all of uh, the shared services for the communities. And so it's to, um, they're still working out kind of exactly what that would entail. Um, some communities would just, they might just be um, attending it and participating, but not like using the resources. Other smaller communities might need it where it would serve the function of some of the things that our housing agent, Sarah, does. So um, it's a, but it's an interesting, it's an idea to try to uh, share these concern, the issues related to uh, affordable housing and um, just housing issues in general. Uh, are there ways that we could work together across the region? So that's, uh, there's a meeting uh, that they're gonna be having to facilitate a discussion about that on uh, November 11th, Tuesday morning, I believe. And I'm, I'll send out, I'll, I'll share that info. The other thing is um, that they're creating working groups to focus on issues. There's been interest from various communities. There's a lot of talk about uh, just COVID obviously and uh, businesses, how to help businesses through the winter. That was the last meeting was a lot of discussion in, in Norwood and Dedham uh, about things like how to get people outside. Um, they're talking about things like heaters and a lot of the outdoor seating, um, but it's also just wanting to keep promoting activities in the communities that will get people outdoors. So like the holiday stroll has been, in some places that's been canceled. I don't know if Westwood, if there's plans for that, but um, just uh, that seems to be the topic in a lot of other communities is really trying to figure out what to do to assist the uh, businesses and, um, just um, so there's 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 a lot of uh, things going on with that. So um, that's my brief update on that. I don't know if anybody had any questions or wanted to have any other updates. I'd be interested to hear how some of the others are addressing things like heating and outdoor spaces, specifically like for restaurants and things like that. You know, because I, I would I believe there's probably some conflict between some of the temporary tent structures and the ability to heat those with, you know, little gas, you know, um, those gas lamps and things like that. And I, I'm hoping that, you know, we can find some type of accommodation to keep these guys going um, because it's going to be a challenge for them all winter. So I'd be, I'd be really curious to see how others are trying to solve that problem. It was interesting. The um, there's a, person there from an organization that kind of consults or something. And they were saying um, a couple of, so one, like the heaters that you get into an issue of permits and safety and everything. I mean, you know, that's, and then the snow, as soon as it starts to snow. And so there's a lot of people would have objections to things, but they're kind of approaching it as, well, they can probably pull things up if they need to, like there's outdoor seating in Norwood in front of, um, uh, uh, napper tandies and what and it, it was the concern that when it starts to snow a lot they'll have to get rid of that completely but um, and then until it gets very heavy they would uh, try to keep it out there um, but, um, and imagine the they'll have to pull stuff in like a car lot has to pull their cars in, in the, with the forecast of snow and then allow the plows to come and do their job and then put everything back out and cross their fingers for that it stays clear for at least a little while yeah, and it, and it's I think the people it's not no one is going to want to be sitting out uh, in the snow you know like in the yeah. sub freezing temperatures and all but I think it was more about just getting people to these downtowns and all um, not um, it doesn't necessarily mean having every business able to operate outdoors but maybe still keeping the kinds of things that draw people into the outdoor activities and whatnot uh, so trying not to cancel things like that and trying to think of creative things that can be done to get people again it's a little different with Westwood we have um, we don't have the same kind of downtown you know as obviously like Dedham Square or Norwood so um, I don't know if Nora if you had any thoughts of uh, on that or anything that I know that we've so, so the select board extended the time that restaurants and retail establishments that have outdoor spaces can keep them open um, they can do that right through the end of December, but from a practical point of view, they probably won't. Um, 
There are some of our outdoor seating areas that have those uh, propane heaters right now. Those work if you don't have a tent. If you have a tent, you can't use the propane heaters. You need a different type of heater. So each business is looking at it differently. One thing the select board did was they waived 50% uh, of our licensing fees this year so that um, you know a, a restaurant with a full full alcohol license would pay an annual fee of five thousand dollars for this year they only pay twenty five hundred so they cut all the fees in half for a little coffee shop they'd normally pay fifty dollars they'll pay twenty five dollars so they did that in recognition of the um, difficult times and then we're working individually with the businesses to see what works uh, somewhere like del frisco's has a different setup than somewhere like the toast office so they're probably likely to have their door seating last longer if it's like that. And then we have other businesses that are also suffering, uh, the taxi businesses. This was something that the select board took off, up last night. We have a number of taxi businesses which were doing poorly already. Um, I think, you know, taxi industry is suffering as a whole with Uber and Lyft. And with the pandemic coming in, all of our taxi licensed taxi drivers are at the um, 128 station. So they saw just their business just fell down to nothing back in March and only more recently started to pick up. Well, several of those taxi companies gave up their insurance and pulled their cars off the road. It made much sense. But now it's coming time to renew their licenses. They didn't want to give up their licenses, but they also didn't want to reinsure their cars and be ready. So the select board recognized that it's an unusual year and they gave them all a six month extension. They can wait. Um, they don't have to renew now. They can just be on hold and come back as late as next June. And if they're interested in renewing then they'll be treated as if they always had a license, but their, their, their fees will be prorated for the time they actually use them. So we're listening to businesses, trying to reach out and see if they have any concerns. We're also providing information to them um, about programs, grant programs from the federal government and the state government, making sure all our businesses are aware of all the opportunities they have to uh, work with programs that might be able to help them get over the, the hurdles that they'll have ahead of them for some time now. All right, thanks. Thanks, Nora. Um, I think if there's no other updates or anything, we have one more item on the agenda, which is the approval of meeting minutes. And let's see, these are <clears throat> the meeting minutes from September 22nd. Is, are there any, um, any edits or suggestions for those? Not for me. Uh, did you get the ones I sent back this morning? That I, I think the link to the YouTube was actually pointing to the September eighth meeting. And yes, yes, I fixed that this morning. Um, yep, Rob pointed out that the link to the meeting was the wrong one, but I did update that to the correct one. Otherwise, they looked spot on. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from the September 22nd planning board meeting um, as submitted. I'll second it. All right, there's a motion and a second and uh, no discussion. So um, roll call vote, Mr. Paff. Aye. And Mr. Gotti. Aye. And I vote aye as well. So we will, we've approved the meeting minutes. And I don't believe there's anything else on the agenda tonight. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second that. There's a motion and a second to adjourn. Mr. Paff. Aye. Mr. Gotti. Aye. And I vote aye as well. And we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.